welcome to today class of nonlinear vibration so already we have completed five modules in this nonlinear vibration and in this module we are going to study about the applications of nonlinear phenomena what we have studied till now so in the first module we have know about the introduction of the nonlinear systems in the second module we have studied about or how to find the governing differential equation motion of the nonlinear systems in the third module we have studied about different approximation methods to find the solution of the governing equation motion and in fourth module we have studied about the stability analysis of the obtained response in the fifth module so we have studied about the numerical techniques used in this nonlinear phenomena or nonlinear vibration systems and in the last module we are going to study about the applications of this nonlinear studies so we will apply the methods what we have studied till now to single degree of freedom system with free and force vibrations so they are will discuss about the duffing equation van der Poel equations also in case of the forced vibration will discuss about the simple primary resonance simple resonance or primary resonance then super harmonic and sub harmonic resonance then we will study about the parametrically excited systems in which we will see about this Matthew Hill equations also already we have discussed about the Floquet theory in stability analysis we will see in case of the parametrically excited system how the solutions obtained by this Floquet theory then we will discuss about this instability regions and then we will go for this multi degree of freedom nonlinear systems also in these examples we will take the continuous systems with and without internal resonance cases also we will study. So, in these applications so we will start with the single degree of freedom free vibrations or we will study about the conservative systems first. So, then next class we will study about the non conservative systems. So, single degree freedom system conservative and non conservative systems in the first two class that means in the first class today class we will study about the single degree freedom nonlinear systems with quadratic and cubic nonlinearities particularly we will study about the conservative systems by using this Duffing equation then we will study next class about the single degree freedom nonlinear systems with cubic and quadratic nonlinearities. So, here we will study about the effect of damping that is we will go for this non conservative systems. Then in this free vibration we will study about the multi degree of freedom system. So, thus then after studying this free vibration we will study about the force vibration of the system and then parametrically excited vibration of the systems. So, today class we will know about representation of the systems with cubic and quadratic nonlinearities. So, some physical systems we will study where we will see about the cubic and quadratic nonlinearities, then review of the methods of solution of nonlinear systems with cubic and quadratic nonlinearities. Then we will discuss about the determination of the steady state response, steady state solution. Then from this equation, so we will see how this frequency, res frequency response curve or the how the frequency and amplitude are related in this nonlinear system. Then finally, we will compare the linear and nonlinear system response. So, in case of this free vibration, so we will going to study or we will study about this Duffing equation for free vibration. So, without damping the equation can be written as x double dot plus omega n square x plus alpha 2 x square plus alpha 3 x q equal to 0. So, the system, so this is quadratic nonlinearity and this is the cubic nonlinearity and in case of the systems without nonlinearity it, it can be reduced to x double dot plus omega n square x equal to 0. So, in case of viscous damping, so we can write this 
doffing equation in this form that is x double dot plus omega n square x plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus alpha 2 x square plus alpha 3 x q equal to 0. Also, if you will study the van der Pol equation, this can be written in this form that is x double dot plus x minus lambda into 1 minus x square into x dot equal to 0. So, in this two classes we are going to study this conservative and non conservative systems. So, today class we will mostly discuss about the systems with quadratic and cubic nonlinearity that is of this type that is x double dot plus omega n square x plus alpha 2 x square plus alpha 3 x q equal to 0. So, first let us see what are the systems which will give rise to this type of equation. So, let us first consider the spring mass damper systems. So, in the spring mass damper systems considering the systems without damping. So, one can write the equation motion of the systems. Let us take the systems without damping. So, that is a spring and mass and let us take the spring to be nonlinear. So, generally in case of a linear spring. So, if we plot this force versus x. So, the system will be for linear system this is the equation curve and for nonlinear curve nonlinear systems either it will be soft or hard. So, in case of soft spring. So, in case of soft spring there will be more elongation with less force when the force is applied when small force is applied. So, we can have large deformation in case of soft spring and in case of hard spring. So, with small with large force we will have small deflection. So, with so let us take two points on this. So, this is one point and this is another point and let us draw the. So, in the sec in this case the so, for the small deflection, so this is the small deflection. So, for the small deflection, so we have to apply a large force, and in this case, with the same forcing, so let us take this force. So, this is the large deflection. So, this is x that is deflection, so the deflection is large, and so for same amount of force, the deflection is large here. So, this is a soft spring and in this case the deflection is small with the same amount of force. So, this is a hard spring. So, one can have a soft spring or hard spring. So, in these cases, so the equation no longer be linear or one cannot write this equation f equal to k x. So, in this case either we have to add. So, for the hard spring let us add this quadratic and cubic. So, alpha x square or we can write alpha 2 x square plus alpha 3 x cube. Similarly, for soft spring or this is for hard spring and in case of soft spring we can write this equation k x minus alpha 2 x square minus alpha 3 x cube. So, this is for soft spring and this equation is for hard spring. So, either by taking a soft spring or hard spring. So, the equation motion for the system can be written in this form that is m x double dot plus k x this is the linear part plus alpha 2 x square plus alpha 3 x cube. So, as no external force is acting on the system. So, this will be equal to 0. Similarly, for this soft spring we can write m x double dot plus k x minus alpha 2 x square minus alpha 3 x q equal to 0. So, instead of taking a spring, so if you take a simple pendulum case also. So, in simple pendulum case also we can write the equation motion. So, this equation motion in this case become. So, in case of the simple pendulum already we have derived the equation motion and this equation motion can be written as theta. So, the generalized coordinate we can take it theta and already we have 
derive this equation. So, this is theta double dot plus g by l sin theta equal to 0. That means, if we shift this mass to a position here and leave it, then it will oscillate about this position about the mean position and if one write the equation motion, then the equation motion is this theta double dot plus g by l sin theta equal to 0. So, where l is the length of the pendulum and theta is this oscillation. So, for small value of theta, so this equation reduced to that of a linear system that is theta double dot plus g by l theta equal to 0, but if theta is not small, so this equation can be written in this form that is theta double dot plus g by l. So, the sin theta we can write theta minus theta q by factorial 6 plus theta 5 by factorial 5. So, in this way we can write, so this will be equal to factorial 5 and one can write this equation. So, one can write the higher order terms also. So, by taking only two terms, then we have a systems with cubic nonlinearity and if you take up to three terms, then this will be a systems with quintic nonlinearity also. So, this system is a system with cubic and quintic nonlinearity and if we limit the systems up to the second term, then this becomes theta double dot plus g by l theta minus theta q by 6. So, these two are the conservative systems as we are not considering damping in these systems. So, in these conservative systems, so one can study the solution of these cases either by doing qualitative analysis or by doing this quantitative analysis. So, in case of qualitative analysis, so one can find the potential well of the systems and from the potential function, one can find the type of response or one can plot the phase portrait and one can find what will be the response. Similarly, by taking a continuous systems, we can reduce to reduce that system to that of a single degree of freedom systems by doing single mode approximation and in that case also we can have a conservative systems where the system response or system equation can be written in the form of quadratic or cubic nonlinearity. So, in case of the pendulum one can observe that. So, let us start from the equilibrium position. So, at this equilibrium position all the energy are kinetic energy. So, let us take to let take the mass up to this and then when it is released. So, when it is released the potential energy goes on decreasing and the kinetic energy goes on increasing. So, kinetic energy become maximum here and it reduces and kinetic energy goes on reducing. So, the velocity becomes 0 here. So, one can see this velocity and so velocity and this at a different position. So, so when we consider the system to be nonlinear, so let us see how the system will behave. So, in case of the linear systems already we know the system behavior will be like this. So, for example, in case of the linear spring mass system, so when you are writing the system equation m x double dot plus k x equal to 0, the or the equation can be written in this form x double dot plus k by m x equal to 0 or x double dot plus omega n square x equal to 0. So, already we know the solution of this linear systems can be written in this form x equal to a sin omega n t plus phi. So, where this a and phi can be obtained from the initial condition. So, for different initial condition, so we can obtain the response of the system. For example, so if you take at, so let us apply impulse force to the system. So, if we apply impulse force and leave it, that means, so if we apply impulse force and leave the system, then the resulting vibration will be a free vibration with 
this initial displacement equal to 0 that means x 0 equal to 0 and x dot 0 will be equal to the applied force by m. So, this is for the initial so called initial condition we can write this way and substituting this initial condition in this case as x equal to a sin omega n t plus phi. So, at, x, at t equal to 0, so x 0 becomes 0, so 0 equal to a sin omega n t plus phi t equal to 0, so as t equal to 0 this term becomes 0, so this becomes a sin phi as a cannot be 0. So, if a is equal to 0 then the response is trivial solution or the system is not vibrating then. So, for that case the sin phi should be equal to 0 as sin phi equal to 0. So, we can substitute this phi equal to 0. So, taking phi equal to 0. So, now by substituting this differentiating this thing. So, we can write x dot. So, x dot 0 equal to. So, this becomes a omega n cos omega n t. So, a omega n cos omega n t. Now, this will be equal to f by m or we can write at t equal to 0. So, t equal to 0. So, this cos omega n t equal to 1. So, a omega n equal to f by m or a will be equal to f by m omega n. So, as a equal to f by m omega n. So, the solution in this case becomes x equal to. So, we have the solution x equal to f by m omega n f by m omega n into sin omega t sin omega n t. So, this is the solution in case of the linear systems when we are considering the systems to be linear. So, this is the solution. So, here the amplitude of the response amplitude of the response that is f by m omega n is constant. So, so this is constant, but as we see in this lecture. So, in case of the nonlinear systems this amplitude of the response is not constant. So, it will vary with the frequency of the system. So, in this case the response resulting solution is f by m omega n. So, that is constant factor. So, the system will vibrate with constant amplitude. So, the system response will be sinusoidal. So, this is t and this is x. So, the omega so here frequency equal to omega n. So, the time period t equal to 2 pi by omega n and the amplitude the amplitude of the response equal to f by m omega n. So, in case of the linear systems we have this thing. So, but in case of the let us see in case of the nonlinear systems how the system behavior will be there. So, we can do the qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis. So, to recall the qualitative analysis. So, in case of qualitative analysis if the equation is written in this form that is u double dot plus f u equal to 0 then by integrating this thing. So, we can write u dot u double dot plus u dot f u d t equal to. So, integration so this becomes constant. So, from this one can write this becomes half u dot square plus f u equal to h. So, half u dot square is nothing but the kinetic energy and f u is the potential energy. So, h will be the total energy that means, this is the conservation of the energy of the system. So, in this conservative system, so the kinetic energy plus potential energy equal to total energy. So, from this total energy, so we can find this potential energy equal to. So, potential energy will be equal to which is equal to integration f u d u and from this we can write this u dot equal to root over 2 into h minus f u. That means, for a particular energy total energy if we know the potential energy of the systems then we can find the velocity of the system. So, by using this qualitative analysis we can find the velocity of the system for a given potential of the system. So, for example, in the spring mass systems with cubic nonlinear spring. 
So, the equation can be written in this form that is u double dot plus omega n square u plus alpha epsilon alpha u q equal to 0. So, here f u equal to f u equal to omega n square u plus alpha epsilon alpha u cube. So, this capital f u becomes f u d u integration f u d u. So, this becomes half omega n square u square integrating this u this becomes half omega n square u square and this u cube. So, this becomes u to the power 4 by 4. So, 1 by 4 epsilon alpha u to the power 4. So, from this so equating this to half u dot square. So, we can have this half u dot square equal to h minus this term. So, u dot can be obtained. So, u dot equal to root over 2 h minus omega n square u square minus 0 0.5 epsilon alpha u to the power 4. So, for a given potential we can find for a given potential we can find the relation between u and u dot that is displacement and velocity of the systems. So, we know the plot between u and u dot that is displacement and velocity is the phase portrait of the systems. So, with time how it evolves can be obtained or can be analyzed from this equation qualitatively. So, first one has to plot this potential function of the system. So, from the potential function taking a potential for a given potential one can find the response. So, this is a code written to find the potential will of the of different systems. So, one can take different values of this f that is small f u, one can take this small f u equal to k x or k u and one can take this thing equal to. So, this is for the linear systems, then for nonlinear systems with quadratic damping one can take f 1 equal to k x plus k 1 x square and then for f 2 can be taken another function can be taken with. So, this is with a hard spring with quadratic nonlinearity, one can take this soft spring with quadratic nonlinearity minus k 1 x square or one can take with cubic nonlinearity only and with hard spring and this is cubic nonlinearity with soft spring. So, taking different type of function, so one can write for example, so here this function is written for this f u equal to 0 0.5. So, this is capital F u capital that is the potential. So, half k x square plus 1 by 4 k 1 x to the power 4. So, if one plot this x versus f u. So, that is the potential potential function. So, one can find the potential function of the system. So, then from the potential function. So, for a given potential one can find. So, for different value of h. So, this is plotted for different value of h. So, different value of h one can find this v. So, v is the or the u, a u dot. So, u dot is the velocity. So, one can plot the displacement versus velocity to find the phase portrait. So, in this way by writing a simple code one can find the potential will and the corresponding phase portrait of the systems. So, for example, in this case with cubic nonlinearity x double dot plus x minus 0 0.1 x q equal to 0. So, one can have this, this is the potential function capital F u. So, by taking different value of F u, for example, one can take this to be, so this is maximum. So, it has a maxima here, also it has another maxima here and it has a this function has a minima here. So, in this conservative systems corresponding to this maximum potential energy corresponding to the maximum potential energy one can obtain a point which is known as the saddle point. So, this is the saddle point that means, this point are practically not achievable that means, the systems will be unstable. So, in this case we have three equilibrium points. So, to find the equilibrium point, so we can put this x double dot equal to 0 or our equation becomes x minus, so x minus 0 0.1 x q 
x minus 0.1 x q equal to 0 or I can write x if I will take common 1 minus 0.1 x square equal to 0. So, from this either x equal to 0 or we can have this x square equal to 1 by 0.1 that is 10 or x equal to. So, we can have x equal to plus minus root 10. So, we have x equal to plus minus root 10. So, we have 3 equilibrium position. So, 1 is x equal to 0 that means, in case of the spring mass systems we have 3 equilibrium position or in case of the simple pendulum also. So, in case of the simple pendulums also we have 2. So, in this case we can find that we have 2 equilibrium position this is 1 equilibrium position and another equilibrium position will be in the top position. So, in vertically downward or vertically top upward. So, or this is pendulum and we can have the inverted pendulum. So, in case of the inverted pendulum position that is if we will take this angle equal to theta. So, when theta equal to 0, so that is one equilibrium position and when theta equal to, so we can find that thing. So, theta double dot plus g by l sin theta equal to 0. So, we can have two equilibrium position by putting this theta double dot equal to 0. So, we have sin theta equal to 0 or theta equal to when sin theta equal to 0. So, theta equal to 0 or 180 degree. So, corresponding to theta equal to 0. So, this is the position and corresponding to 180 degree. So, the position is vertically upward the system is vertically the pendulum is vertically upward. So, in this position already we have seen or one can show that this position will be a unstable position and this position is a stable position. So, theta corresponding to corresponding to 0 is a stable position. So, this will give the minimum potential energy and in other case the potential energy will be maximum. So, similarly in this case we have 3 equilibrium position 1 x equal to 0. So, x equal to 0 is the minima. So, corresponding to minima, so we have a center. So, we have periodic response near to that point. So, if you take if one take this f u let us take f u equal to this line. So, corresponding to this value of f u. So, we have 3 positions this 1 2 and this. So, near the so near these two so in between this point and this point that means near the minimum point. So, the response will be periodic. So, we will have periodic response and corresponding to these two corresponding to this maximum point we have saddle points. So, in between these two saddle points the response of the systems is periodic and outside the saddle point. So, we have two solutions and so in this case near the center we have periodic response of the system. So, in this way by doing this qualitative analysis we can study the response of the system. So, corresponding to a particular point. So, we can have the velocity and displacement. So, at this point. So, for example, in this point. So, we will have. So, for this value of this. So, we have this and this. So, we have two solution two and by taking this thing. So, we have a simple periodic response. So, if we are taking let this is f u. So, if this f u is less than. So, if f u is less than total energy of the system then or from this equation we can see. So, u dot equal to 2 into h minus f u. So, if f u is less than h then we will have a. So, then only we will have a real number u dot. So, if f u is less than h. So, for a particular value of h that means h is the total energy. So, for particular value of h 
if f u is less than h then we will have two velocity term and if h is less than f u then this term becomes imaginary and the flow will not exist. So, that means, we have to take f u less than already we know this total energy this is h is the total energy. So, f u should be less than this. So, if this potential function is greater than if you are taking a potential function which is greater than h then the system response will not be there. So, this is the line we have taken total h. So, this is the h line. So, this is the potential function. So, for this total energy h here. So, we just see that this value up to this f u has a value less than h. So, the motion will be. So, we have corresponding to this value. So, we have some motion and corresponding to this to this. So, there will be no motion of the system and no. So, as h is more than f u, so we have motion. So, here f u is greater than h, so there will be no motion and here f u is less than h, so we have periodic motion and similarly here there will be no motion of the systems and then again here we have periodic motion of the system. So, we will have alternate periodic solutions of the systems corresponding to these center points. So, in this way one can do the qualitative analysis to study the response of the conservative systems. Also, we have one can do this quantitative analysis. So, in case of this pendulum, so the phase portrait is plotted. So, this periodic response, so these are the saddle point. So, theta minus 20 radian to plus 20 radian it is plotted. So, these are the saddle point. So, one can have the homoclinic and heteroclinic orbits. So, this is the homoclinic orbit then. So, in between this orbit, so we have this periodic response isolated periodic response. That means, if you leave the systems at some position, then it will try to oscillate with different amplitude depending on the initial condition. So, it depends on the height at which we are leaving this thing. So, let we leave it at this position. So, it will come to this position equilibrium position and then again it will oscillate. So, this amplitude depends. So, amplitude depends on the initial disturbance, but the frequency you can note the frequency does not depend on that. So, the frequency is constant. So, here the, but in case of the nonlinear systems we are going to see that the frequency depends on the or the amplitude depends on the frequency in case of the linear systems. So, this omega n equal to root over g by l, but in case of the nonlinear systems we will see that it will be no longer g by l, but a factor multiplied with this g by l. So, after doing this qualitative analysis, so, so this code is written for this pendulum to obtain the phase portrait and already we know. So, these are the different methods used for quantitative analysis. So, in module 2, we made detailed discussions about how to find the solution of the nonlinear equations by straightforward expansion method, harmonic balance method, lean state Poincare method, method of averaging, method of multiple scales, intrinsic harmonic balance method, generalized harmonic balance method, multiple time scale harmonic balance method and modified lean state Poincare methods. And so, to revise or to know or review the systems with cubic nonlinearity. Let us take the method of multiple scales and in case of the method of multiple scale already we know. So, let this is the equation for the systems with quadratic and cubic nonlinearities. So, in case of method of multiple scale we should take T n equal to epsilon to the power n t. So, where t is the time and T n so we have n equal to 0, 1, 2. So, 
n equal to 0. So, we have t 0. So, t 0 equal to t. So, and t 1 equal to epsilon t, t 2 equal to epsilon square t. So, t 1 and t 2, t 0, t 1, t 2 are different time scales corresponding to or similar to our second hand and min second hand minute hand and our hand. So, t 0 equal to t, t 1 equal to epsilon t and t 2 equal to epsilon square t. So, by taking different time scale, so already we know this d by d t can be written in this form that is d 0 plus epsilon d 1 and d square by d t square can be written in this form that is d 0 square plus 2 epsilon d 0 d 1 plus epsilon square d 1 square plus 2 d 0 d 2 and higher order terms. So, by substituting these two equation also we have to write this x. So, writing x, x as a function of t and epsilon is the parameter. So, can be written as epsilon x 1 plus epsilon square x 2 plus epsilon q x 3, where this x 1, x 2, x 3 are function of different time scales that is t 0, t 1, t 2. So, taking these three equation that is x and d square by d t square d by d t in this equation. So, we can write or we can separate the terms with order of epsilon 0. So, this is order of epsilon 0, this is order of epsilon 1 and this equation is order of epsilon 2. So, separating the equation with epsilon to the power 0. So, one can write this equation that is d 0 square x 1 plus omega square x 1. So, solution of this equation is x 1 equal to one can write this x 1 equal to a e to the power i omega 0 t 0 plus a bar e to the power minus i omega 0 t 0. So, as d 0 square x 1 plus omega 0 square x 1 equal to 0. So, the constant a should, should not be a function of t 0. So, this is a function of t 1 and t 2. So, a t 1 and t 2 e to the power i omega 0 t 0 plus a bar e to the power i minus omega 0 t 0. So, by substituting this x 1 equation in the second equation that is d 0 square x 2 plus omega 0 square x 2 equal to minus 2 0 minus 2 d 0 d 1 x 1 minus alpha 2 x 1 square. So, we can find this equation, but in this equation one can note that this term this minus 2 i omega 0 d 1 a is coefficient of e to the power i omega 0 t 0. So, if this term is present in the solution uh, in this equation or this term will lead to a solution. So, this term will lead to a solution which will be infinite as omega approaches omega 0 or the solution becomes. So, this is exponentially as we are taking this is e to the power i omega t 0. So, this will be a secular term or this will be non unbounded. So, but as the actual solution is bounded. So, we have to eliminate this term. So, this term is known as secular term. So, eliminating the secular term. So, we can write this d 1 a equal to 0. So, putting d 1 a equal to 0. So, this equation reduces to d 0 square x 2 plus omega 0 square x 2 equal to minus alpha 2 a square e to the power 2 y omega 0 t 0 plus a a bar plus its complex conjugate. So, the solution will become, so from this we know, so the solution becomes alpha 2 a square by 3 omega 0 square e to the power 2 y omega 0 t 0 minus alpha 2 omega 0 square a a bar plus its complex conjugate. So, from this by or substituting this x 0, x 1 and x 2 in this epsilon square equation. So, we can write the equation in this form. So, in this case also as it contain a term e to the power 2 i omega 0 t 0. So, this is a secular term. So, one has to eliminate this term to limit or make the solution bounded. 
So, to eliminate these terms we can substitute 2 y omega 0 d 2 a minus 10 alpha 2 square minus 9 alpha 3 omega 0 square by 3 omega 0 square a square a bar equal to 0. Now, substituting this as we have taken this a, a can be written in polar form like a equal to half a e to the power i beta. So, by taking this thing and separating the real and imaginary parts. So, we can write this omega a dash equal to 0. So, this is one equation and second equation becomes omega 0 a beta dash plus 10 alpha 2 square minus 9 alpha 3 omega 0 square by 24 a omega 0 cube a cube equal to 0. So, we can have this beta equal to. So, from the second equation we can write this beta equal to 9 alpha 3 omega 0 square minus 10 alpha 2 square by 24 omega 0 cube a square t 2. So, 1 a has gone so because a is multiplied with this. So, plus beta 0 and as omega a dash equal to 0. So, we can write this a dash equal to 0 or a is a constant. So, we can write a this capital A equal to half a e to the power i this term i 9 alpha 3 omega 0 square minus 10 alpha 2 square by 24 omega 0 cube a epsilon square. So, f t 2 equal to replacing t 2 by epsilon square t. So, you can write this epsilon square a square t plus i beta 0. So, one can note that this term is the frequency resulting frequency of the system that means in case of the nonlinear vibration. So, with this frequency the systems will vibrate. So, the frequency is no longer equal to this omega 0 unlike in case of the linear system in case of the linear system. So, the response frequency was omega 0, but in this case the response frequency is this omega which is no longer omega 0, but equal to 9 alpha 3 omega 0 square minus 10 alpha 2 square by 24 omega 0 q epsilon square a square. So, one can note that the resulting solution becomes so as x equal to epsilon x 1 plus epsilon square x 2 taking only the first two terms. So, we can write x equal to epsilon a cos omega t plus beta 0 minus epsilon a square alpha 2 by 2 omega 0 into 1 minus 1 by 3 cos 2 omega t plus 2 beta 0 plus order of epsilon q or we can write this omega equal to omega 0 into 1 plus 9 alpha 3 omega 0 minus 10 alpha 2 square epsilon square a square by 24 omega 0 square. So, we have taken this omega common omega 0 common. So, for linear systems only this one is there and for nonlinear systems. So, this is the part added to the frequency of the systems. So, so in our module 2. So, we have used different methods to find this equation of the system. So, in case of the systems with quadratic and cubic nonlinearity. So, let us take some examples and see how this omega is varying with omega. So, with amplitude. So, if one plot or if one take alpha 1 equal to 1, alpha 2 equal to 0, alpha 3 equal to 0 that means or alpha 1 equal to 1, alpha 2 equal to 0 alpha 3 if one take 0. So, then it will lead to a linear systems and we know that the amplitude is constant and that will be equal to f by m omega n. So, if we have applied an impulse force, but if we take let let us take only the cubic nonlinearity that is alpha 3. So, if you take alpha 3 equal to 0 0.1. So, let us take this epsilon equal to 0 0.1 also. So, if you take this thing, so one can find so, with frequency with increase in frequency the amplitude increases. So, for a particular frequency. So, for example, for this frequency 1.001. So, either the amplitude will be this or this that means, in case of this in case of a 
spring with cubic nonlinear system. So, this is a spring with cubic nonlinearity. So, this is the equilibrium position, static equilibrium position. So, it means either it will be the position will be at this frequency, the amplitude will be this or the amplitude will be this. So, so it will have two value of the amplitude. So, with increase in so with increase in frequency, no longer the response or with the increase in amplitude no longer the frequency is constant, but the frequency is a function of the amplitude. Second let us take, so in this case we have seen this and if you take this alpha 1 equal to 1, alpha 2 equal to 0 0.1 and then, then alpha 3 equal to 0 0.5. So, we have taken alpha 3, so this is the third case we are taking and epsilon equal to 0.1. So, in this case also, so one can see the frequency. So, here corresponding to you just see, so here corresponding to amplitude 1, so 1 has frequency nearly equal to 1.004, but in this case this frequency decreases. So, in comparison to this case one can have a higher amplitude here, but with higher amplitude. So, this is the frequency. So, in this case the frequency. So, the maximum so for a amplitude same amplitude 1 same amplitude 1 the frequency is decreased for the same amplitude. So, by taking this alpha 2 equal to 0 0.1. So, it decreased. Now, let us take this alpha 2 equal to 0 0.5. So, by taking alpha 2 equal to 0 0.5, now increasing this alpha 2, one can see this frequency again increases. So, here comparing this and this, so here alpha 3 equal to 0 0.5, here also alpha 3 equal to 0 0.5, but here alpha 2 equal to 0 0.1, here alpha 2 is taken to be 0 0.5. So, here alpha 2 is increased. So, by increasing this alpha 2, that is the quadratic nonlinear term. So, one can see the frequency increases. So, let us take so for 2, so the time response is plotted for 2 value of frequency. So, this correspond to this correspond to one frequency and this correspond to another frequency. So, corresponding to that frequency we, we obtain the amplitude and the, then the response is plotted, the response is plotted from this equation x equal to epsilon a cos omega t plus beta 0 minus epsilon a square alpha 2 2 omega 0 into 1 minus 1 by 3 cos 2 omega t plus 2 beta 0. So, from this equation this curve has been plotted. So, in this case, so this equation by taking this alpha 2 equal to 0. So, this can be reduced to that of a simple pendulum equation that is theta double dot plus g by l. So, plus g by l theta minus theta q by 6 equal to 0. So, this is systems with cubic nonlinearity. So, here if we take so this equation is alpha 1. So, here alpha 1 that is omega square equal to g by l. So, this g by l if one take equal to 1 then the corresponding thing if one. So, g by so the coefficient will be so this in this case this alpha 3 alpha 3. So, here alpha 1 equal to g by l and alpha 3 equal to alpha 3 equal to minus g by 6 l. So, by taking and epsilon term. So, this is epsilon alpha 3. So, epsilon alpha 3 equal to minus g by 6 l. So, by substituting this equation in this frequency equation. So, one can find this frequency and also one can find this x. So, in this case, so one core correspond to one frequency and the second core correspond to another frequency. So, in this case, we have taken alpha 3 equal to 0 0.1. Similarly, let us take another case. So, in this case the phase portrait, so one can plot the phase portrait also. So, phase portrait one can see 
the phase portrait is periodic. So, which we have obtained in case of the already we have seen this phase portrait in the qualitative analysis. So, in qualitative analysis also we got the same thing. So, this is the example same example we have taken. So, here we have a periodic response here. So, near this equilibrium position that is 0 0. So, we have this periodic response. So, in this way for a conservative systems one can apply either the qualitative analysis or the quantitative analysis by using different perturbation methods to find the response of the systems. So, we have seen the response of the linear system while the in linear systems the amplitude of the response does not depend on the frequency in case of nonlinear systems the frequency and amplitude are related. So, with increase in frequency or with increase in amplitude the frequency changes. So, depending on the nonlinearity the frequency will either increase or decrease. So, in this case in case of nonlinear conservative systems the frequency is a function of amplitude in case of nonlinear system and in case of linear system it is constant. So, next class we will see or we will discuss about the non-conservative systems where we will take different type of damping. For example, we will take the viscous damping, coulomb damping and hysteresis damping and we will plot their response curve and phase portrait and we will discuss about the response of the system. So, we will take both doffing equation and the van der Poel equation to study the non-conservative system. Thank you.